Today we're talking about outboard gear on a plug-in show because it's a plug-in, but it's outboard gear, but it's a plug-in. Of course, we're talking about the McDSP ABP 8 or 16. It is a rack analog box that has plugins that you control on your screen like normal, but it doesn't sound like a plugin. And to demonstrate this thing, I brought along my friend and amazing mastering engineer, Brian Lucy. Brian, how's it going? Hello. <laughs> it's so, going great. I uh, I have a feeling we were talking a little bit before the show and Brian just played me a sample and that's actually, I'm not going to say that because I don't want to, I don't want to give you any opinions yet. I'm going to let you guys hear it for yourself. But what we're going right. to do is Brian, who is in pretty much all, you know, I guess hybrid mastering, but most of your signal chain thing is analog. Yes. Yeah. All, yeah. all analog except uh, I use the fab filter EQ, Pro Q2. Right. Yeah. So you love analog. I do. Quite a bit. You're kind of I'm the analog about, guy. I'm all about the analog. I mean, the, the thing with about plugins is one here and one there is cool, but when you stack them, they just don't add up. So if we yeah. do the math on it, you know, let's say, a, let's give a plug in the benefit of the doubt. Let's say it's 92, 94% of what hardware is. Well, that's pretty good. But if you had five of them, now you're down into the 70% range. So that's not good. Right. <laughs> So, sure. And, yeah. and, and, and plugins are difficult because you're always fighting against clipping at the digital ceiling. And analog is fun because you're always pushing into something that's better and better and then it craps out. You're not afraid to have gain. And so what we're going to look at here today is a box that is kind of beyond me, to be honest, uh, in terms of how he does this. But there are 16 channels of analog stages that are programmable with the software and each of them has three gain blocks so these three gain blocks allow you to push and push and push like you do with analog but it's like idiot proof you can't fuck it up you can't clip it it can't yeah. be clipped and that's the beauty of this thing is that it's it's almost as good as as analog outboard it's so close Mm -hmm. um and it's kind of cheap if you stop for a second and break it down by the channel it's like under 500 bucks a channel right which you know like the first thing we're going to look at here is this um kind of a fairchild-esque thing mm -hmm. uh c673a and you know 16 of those for 500 bucks a channel that's kind of cheap yeah, right? it's pretty so good. No, it's not the same. Of course, it's not the same. But this is so much better than plugins that I'm happy to use it in my new uh, all analog Atmos mastering rig, right. which is how I came to this. I was looking for solutions for an all analog Atmos setup. And this box kind of blew me away. It was terrifyingly good and very easy to hook up and very easy to use. Yeah, I was I was really surprised when you told me that you started checking it out, and uh, that's definitely made me curious. So, without further ado, let's hear this thing. And to do that, we are going to use two tracks from uh, the Matt Ross Spang Start to Finish series featuring Eli Paperboy Reed. So, if you guys haven't seen that, you can check it out on Pure Mix. And right. you have the C six seventy three pulled up. Yeah. So what what I did here was just built a simple session, two channels that are the same audio so that we can just gain up kind of, you know, we can gain up the, the non uh, compressed or EQ'd one at, at will as we go through. And then we've got some of the different, some of my favorites are here. There's, there's, there's more than these. We'll, we'll see how many we get through. We'll kind of start with my favorite. So uh, for this style, and, and frankly, for a lot of styles, this, um, this kind of 673A sound is a really good place to start. Um, and so like the beauty of this thing is that again, as, as the output gain comes up in, in plugin land, you're always worried, you know, it's in the back of your head, like, oh no, gain staging, what's in front, what's behind all of that. And here, I mean, you could literally like stack, you know, you could stack eight stereo pairs on your two bus, which would be insane. Okay. But you could put eight stereo pairs on your two bus. And you could run it however you want, and you you never have to worry about that 
that digital ceiling. The 32-bit internal processing and the way that it's been designed, it's just it's just musical and idiot proof, which is a it's a great freedom. So here we just have the one piece, and I'm just going to do a couple of uh, just a quick passes between the two, and we'll use my preferred listening method for a being things, which is not to go constantly through and a b, which is like an instant headache, and it it brings your energy all the way up into your brain and takes it out of your body. We don't want that. So my preferred listening method for a b we're going to use, which is starting somewhere. It's going to be random in this case. Play a few bars, stop, switch to the other sound, play the same few bars, stop, switch, etc. Once, twice, as many times as I feel like. So that's the way I suggest that you A, B, everything, which if you don't get any further in this video, has been worth your time already, because that's really the way to compare things. So let's see here my uh, spanking new Pro Tools Ultimate Rig. Really, I guess we just want this. What yeah, what do you have uh, kind of pulled up in the in the insert chain here? So. Well, um, if I was going to do some actual mastering with this, which is, I guess, a quick story worth telling, the way that I tested this thing was my buddy John Miller came over um, and, and brought his favorite plugins. So John is a TV and film composer. He's currently artist in residence in Chicago uh, for TV and film. He, he's doing like um, the Nat Geo show, uh, Life, Life Below Zero. So if you check that out, there's some really kind of interesting music in there. John's developed his own kind of cool, weird, atmospheric style. So, you know, he, he has some very intelligent ideas in life. One of them came from a book he read about how many options people can manage. So I think it was like seven is the most number of options. So if you're selling like ketchup, let's say, and you go to the grocery store and there's 10, people walk by. They're like, nope, can't do it. It's too much. If there's two or three, they might be interested. But if there's like six or seven, it's like in this sweet spot where people will do the test and pick one and buy it. Mm -hmm. So in his world, there's like, I think he has five, six, seven, I forget the number, but it's somewhere in the five to seven range of his favorite compressors and his favorite, you know, clean compressor, color compressor, slap delay, room, plate, whatever. He's got he's got these piles. So that ultimately he's working with, you know, 30 or 40 plugins only that do everything at a high level. So we compared his best EQ compression plugins and chains of plugins that he uses all the time as a composer and mixer of his own stuff. We compared that with this thing. We literally plugged in, and in 20 minutes, it was killing everything he had. In fact, in 20 minutes, it was very remarkably close to my analog chain. Hmm. Like, a little scary. I was like, whoa, yeah. really close. Now, there's no tubes in it for real. There's no transformers in it for real. So it wasn't quite there but it was really close and really close quickly. So back to the point, if I was going to do some mastering with this thing, I would use your basic, uh, you know, fab filter type or just any kind of clean EQ, whatever clean EQ you like. And then I would have some options here like this uh, chicken head, which is kind of an Altec-esque sort of thing. Um, this Royal Q, which is a slightly euphonic, slightly tuby, nice equalizer that can run in, in MS mode or link mode or separately. And, and the Royal Mew, uh, the Mew and the Q are new. And I think they weren't there when this box first came out. I think these are newer, meaning the programming can come later and mm -hmm. it could be implemented into the design of the box. The box is yeah. a template, an analog template. So, so these are new and that's a, that's a very Mew with uh, some saturation options and some EQ tilt and you know some interesting little additions and then we've got this lovely kind of vibey you know moving a lot of air thing uh that fairchilds do again it's not it's not the same but it's a hell of a lot better than any fairchild plugin that ever lived and and i'm not even a fan of some of the fairchild clones that are 10 grand i won't name names but you know, the thing has a weight to it that a lot of the clones don't capture. So to me, this is not a big letdown. 
And then this lovely limiter here, this limiter we kind of brought in as a way of emulating sort of the limiting and the clipping that I get with my, you know, very, very, very fancy, very and very beautiful Pacific Microsonics converter, which is still winning shootouts. Uh, my friend Hunter Round Badge on uh, Instagram, he he did some shootouts and it was like still killer. 20 years later, it's still the best A to D. And it does really good analog clipping. So we brought this in and this is cool. It has a color control where you can kind of go brighter or darker from a neutral spot. And again, the beauty of all of these McDSP hardware, software hybrids, I don't know how else to call them, is that as the gain comes up, it's just better every time. There's never any problems with gain. Um, and so we put this at the end of the chain just for setting final levels. And you might use one or two or three of these with a clean type EQ and, and off you go. So yeah, this is kind of a starting point. There's some others we might get to, but just in the interest of time, kind of bang, bang through it. Uh, the chicken head is kind of aggressive. This uh, 673A is kind of musically fat and bouncy, kind of like a Fairchild. The Royal Mew is kind of elegant, like a very Mew would be, and has some little bells and whistles. And then the Royal Q is, again, kind of slightly tuby, kind of uh, elegant and nice. So anyway, that was a long introduction. I'm so sorry. You're really bored now. You want to hear something. You just built up all the anticipation. I just want to hear it. <laughs> we built it up. Yeah. All right, so let's so okay. let's go here and just have a little listen. Let's just take it from the top. I've gained up channel two quite a bit. So here's uh, channel one. that's uh, enough to make the point yeah it's really interesting that it definitely has that feel of a transformer just kind of soaking up some of the the harsh transient stuff and it's generally more pleasing and a little bit smoother as it's going through yeah it's that that's that kind of bouncy glue the weight mm. and the bouncy glue of like a fair child and you have the royal q in right while we're yeah do i, I if i do it's not doing anything i do I'm interested to see if it's doing anything, even just kind of sitting there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's check that. So yeah. So we're all out, and the queue is out.
it a little bit. Yeah, that was interesting. I didn't expect that. But yeah, there was some weight there and it was kind of, yeah. you know, somehow he's he's doing some kind of, you know, way over everyone's head, uh, you know, sort of genius level Transformer-esque things. Okay, so let's link the left, right. And then let's just play with this. I mean, this track sounds great. So I'm not I'm not here to make it better. We're just playing with this thing. Let's have a listen. to me sounds great it's really nice yeah like the thing about this box is that you just can do no wrong and that's what analog is about you know it's just it allows you to fear less and enjoy more Mm. and uh, i'm all about that less concerns and more of your energy being creative and inspired and making inspiring things that people can really you know really feel so yeah, I mean it's a great sounding production, and I'm not uh, here to make it better. I just, you know, I did kind of some typical kind of brighten the top and bump the bottom, and did a little cut there at whatever this is like 4K because there was, you know, there's a little edgy thing, but that edgy thing could it could go the other way. You could emphasize the edgy thing, mm-hmm. drop the high and low, and this could be a very mid rangey track, which would be more in line with its with its era, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the interesting thing in mastering is kind of do we do we push into the era or do we push against it and kind of modernize but still reference the era? You know, all of that is a different conversation. But that EQ does a lot and it does it all it does it all really well. Yeah. You also have the limiter pulled up on there. I do. Now the limiter is on. It's been mm-hmm. on. But yeah, let's let's take this. Actually, let's uh let's just push this guy back on let's see where we're at with those two
So that's fun. That's really fun. Man, that's sounding great already. Yeah, I mean, it's really cool. I think there's an, uh, to, to, to pontificate, because I, I tend to do, I think there's an image problem here, because when I think of McDSP, I think of plugins. And when I think of this thing, I don't think it's a plugin. Mm. It's hardware. Uh, technology I can't understand, but I, I opened the box. I looked in there. I'm like, okay, I see yeah. 16 channels. I see D to A's. I see A to D's. Uh, I see the thing. There's the game blocks. Like, okay, that's as far as I go. I don't know what the fuck is going on inside this box. Mm -hmm. But this thing is, I think it suffers from being McDSP. I, I, I suggested to them, they, they make a subline called McDSP Pro because we know that Pro just makes everything better. Right. Um, <laughs> or often things that are pro are actually worse, to be honest. A lot of people will throw pro on crap. But uh, the, the point remains the same. You know, when you look at this and you're like, oh, it's like seven grand. It seems like a lot for McDSP because mm -hmm. they make plugins and plugins are cheap. But this is a whole different thing. And at 500 bucks an analog channel, no conversion, no cables, mm -hmm. no clipping problem, total recall fully dynamic, automatable, everything. Eh, starting to seem pretty cheap. Right. Yeah. And I mean, that's what, like a channel of a 500 series. If you get it for 500 bucks, that's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. If you get one of the sort of mid price 500 series, but you're getting yeah. like, you know, a lot. Yeah. Uh, 16 mono, eight stereo, and you can combine them. There's a whole mm -hmm. other thing it does, which, um, like, let's say you wanted to submix. So let's say you were going to put four of these processors like I have here. Let's say you were going to put four of these on your on your mix, right? So you got a limiter. Let's say you do that one. Uh, let's say you do the Royal Q, a nice EQ. So that's three. And then uh, just for fun, the Royal Mu, which we haven't played with yet which is a kind of a cleaner, kind of elegant tube compressor. So let's say you have those four. So that would take up eight channels. So then what you could do, you could take eight channels of uh, some kind of outputs that you have, like, you know, whatever they may be, and you can do this thing, this guy, the Moo channel. So this one's in stereo, obviously, because we have a stereo file, but... If you pull this up on four submixes, four groups, or eight monos, it would then it would then sum through these and it could go to the other four. So this thing is a high low EQ. It's got saturation, a one knob compressor. Yeah, you know, it's kind of cool. The tone of this isn't my personal favorite, but I'm not mixing. Mm -hmm. In a mixing context, that could be cool. Right. Um, so there's that option too, which is like a kind of like almost like a summing mixer thing. And then, you know, four, four stereo pairs and then four stereos on the, on the two mix, that's your 16 channels. But at that point, like, you know, and, and I don't want to oversell it, but I think if I was mixing and I had this and a clean EQ, right? Like fab filter or this generic one that comes or whatever you like, I would never use a plug-in for compression or color EQ ever. Just use this. Yeah. And you can print this thing to tracks. So if you run out of tracks, you can print it and you can come back yeah. and do it again. You just commit right? the track and yeah. Commit to the track, right? So mm -hmm. and, and back with my friend John, and when he came over, the thing I didn't mention was when he when he took it home, he he borrowed mine. Oh, I have two of them now. I have two 16 channels for my all analog Atmos rig. But he took the 16 channel and he AB'd the, you know, blank out of it. And he was like, this kills everything that I can do. Mm -hmm. And it's more fun. Um, and so, you know, we've done enough testing to, to be yeah. clear that this just isn't even, it's just not even close. Now, yes, it's a lot mm -hmm. of money compared to a, $30 plug-in, but it's like, to me, if, if you find yourself frustrated with, with stacking plugins, like this is your answer, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so 
the whole thing that brought you to this was Atmos though, right? Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. In order for me to do a convincing mastering job in the Atmos world that would be satisfying to me, where I know that I can upgrade anybody's anything, mm-hmm. I needed to have a lot of analog outboard. And so I do have some analog hardware. And I do have 32 channels of this. So I've got 32 there and 32 here. And that's more than enough. 64 channels is a is a lot. Um, so yeah, I came to it for that reason. Uh, and then I sort of, I just feel like it's a sleeper, you know, which is mm-hmm. why I wanted to do it here with you. I mean, again, I get the money is a lot, but it's not a lot in comparative terms. And it's not a lot if you look at how much more fun it is and how much better and easier everything's gonna go right you know and and compare it to like a converter rack of eight or 16 converters and db25 cables and all that i mean i've done that here Mm -hmm. you know i I put grim cable because it's a lot better than mogami cable and well that's extra money and then you got converters and that's five grand for you know 32 channel uh aurora which is what i went with so yeah all that expense is out the window this thing is like download a couple drivers Mm-hmm. plug in a thunderbolt 2 i think it is uh they link together i think you can link four of them mm-hmm. um and off you go you know That's it great. acts like a plug-in it looks like a plug-in it's not yeah um so i'm obviously listening on airpods which is not a good way to do a mastering demo or a plug-in demo of any sorts or whatever so i'm excited to see this uh you know go back and watch it with something else but i can definitely hear it with this and i also yeah. just want to add that this video is not sponsored by mcdsp brian bought no. his abps he was not given them full, uh so full price full price yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so this is just a uh thing he likes it yeah None of that. Yeah, let me let me show you the chicken head too. This one seems to me reminiscent of, although certainly none of these are copying, but reminiscent of an Alltech or um, similar type of things in that in that vein of which there are many that people make now. Better for aggressive things. Not necessarily great for this track in stereo, but it's a really cool piece, and I want to show it to you. I would be inclined more to use it like on snares or basses or vocals or you know something more of like a solo track or a little subgroup where you're really trying to kind of juice it up. It, it kind of in the way that the 673 is a bit more elegant. This one is a bit more aggressive. It tends to want to go that way, but again, there's no dogma here. Whatever works. So let's just do a little A, B. We still have the Royal Q in there doing a little bit. Um, That doesn't really matter too much. We still have the limiter in there doing a little bit. Um, We can just leave those. It's fine. case you know actually the clean the clean track two um was a little louder and that's a little trick that i use sometimes if i'm just wanting to make sure that i'm not getting tricked by louder is better is make the one that you're not working on a tenth of a db louder you know just or subjectively don't worry about the number just if it feels a little teeny bit louder where you're like oh that's definitely the louder one that's a, a good line to play with so that you're not always just pushing and pushing and pushing gain. Uh, although we love to do that. Um, so in that case, it was actually a little louder to be clean, but it's still cooler and more glued. And, and you start to hear what it does. Although again, you're not fully hearing it because I'd like to run like a snare drum or a bass through this and slam it if I were in your shoes.
beautiful. You're hearing that on the on your earbuds, Mark. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Even over the earbuds, it's definitely fun. Through the whole whatever beauty yeah. of technology that's happening here. Yeah, AirPods plus streaming audio from you coming to me. Yep. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And then and, you guys hearing it over the YouTube compression as well. Right. <laughs> Good luck, kids. Yeah. Have fun. No, I mean yeah. it, it's clear. It, it's you know I can hear things over YouTube. It, mm -hmm. I'm kidding. Well, that's awesome. It's a great introduction of the box. Um, definitely something that I might have to look at more and then curse you if you cost me a bunch of money. So I, I do that to people. And if we have more time, we could we could A, B this with my rig, which is, you know, my very carefully curated every cable, every tube. And my rig is better, but the Delta isn't, isn't huge. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's really impressive to me yeah i mean i would i wouldn't you know i personally would not be satisfied if i was like, give up your rig and use this for mastering no but mm -hmm. comparing this to every plugin ever made for compression and, and color eq it's like yeah that's that's a no-brainer it's a no-brainer yeah. yeah so just they're all useful tools right and it's whatever inspires and gets an yeah. emotional connection going yeah and i get it. it's yeah. a lot of money for for a lot of people and so it's mm -hmm. not for everybody um mm -hmm but it's definitely worth the money if you want to go there. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, sure. what, yeah. that's what I'm here to say. Yeah. This awesome. shit is good. It right. works. It's easy. It's fun. It's inspiring. It's great. Yeah. Awesome. I'm glad we did this. And uh, a little teaser for people, which we won't say what it is, but we're going to do it again with something else in the near future. So stay tuned. We're going to do it again. Well, we can, I think we can hint more than that. Oh, good. We're going to do it. We're going to do it again. Uh, no, I've talked about it online. I've talked okay. about it on Instagram. So awesome. Yeah. My my whole rig is being uh, hooked up to robotics with uh, by Chris at Access Analog. So I built a B rig. I matched it by ear. It's 98, 99% the same thing. In some ways, I like the B rig better, but they're really freaking close. So he's going to, in the next six months, hopefully... Uh, he just got the rig last week. It's taken me over a year to put it together, more like a year and a half. So he's going to get robotics on every knob and every switch. And then that will be available to people to rent uh, for you know what I think is a reasonable price and use it through Access Analog. It'll also be something where I can do teaching and 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 do remote working and all sorts of interesting things. So yeah. we'll look at that later. It'll, it'll, again, it'll look like a plug-in like this does, but it'll be actual hardware like this is except it'll be my my favorite chain hardware my 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 stuff stuff yeah. i use for it that you put together over decades it's pretty, pretty yeah awesome. i mean it's well it's, it's kind of the same thing i've rolled with more or less i mean i added an overstayer piece but other than that it's the same thing i've rolled with for every record for you know gosh it's been maybe 16 years now 15 16 yeah. years but yeah it took it took like five years to put it together mm-hmm and uh it just works for every style every day i love it and uh, so yeah. now i have two and soon one of them can be a plug-in so find brian magicgardenmastering.com and on instagram thank you so much for taking the time to do this thank you everybody have fun be good to each other and to animals and uh we'll talk soon